Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Catherine and I wanted to make a super short video. I know I always say that, but this one I'm going to try and keep short because I want to show you something very specific. A lot of people in our brand new AI group, come and join us, it's awesome. The link is down below this video. But we have a new AI group. We got 700 people came and joined in the first couple of days and it is buzzing with activity. So please come and join us. Anyway, we had a few questions this morning about faces and I wanted to talk about that. So one of the questions that I'm seeing in the group is how can you take a face and it could be any face, it could be your own face, it could be a face that you've drawn or photographed, a face from any of your existing photographs or a face that you've generated from mid journey or a character face. How can you take a face and then put that onto a person in different situations in different places. And there's actually a fairly easy way of doing that with a tool that I've discovered recently. And I want to show you how that works. And the best news is it's free. Yay. So for example, on my screen, you can see there's me as a cyberpunk, which is pretty awesome. I really want to be a cyberpunk and be like roaming the city at night, beating cybercrime and I'm stuck here making videos, but you know, it's, it's, it's a nice dream. There's also, there's me as a cat girl as well. So you kind of get a feel for the, the sort of things that you can do with this tool. I've just used my own face, but as I say, you can use any face that you have. You can use characters, you can use pictures, you can use images that you've created from mid journey. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to make pictures like this. And this is pretty cool because you could use this in your books to create characters and to have the same face on characters as they go through different situations. So this is a very, very powerful tool. So you are going to need Discord to use this tool. And if you watched my video on Mid Journey over the weekend, I do talk about how to set up a Discord account in that video. So do take a look at that if you're not sure. You don't have to use Mid Journey with this. I like to use Mid Journey just because it is the most powerful AI art generator that's available at the moment. And I think it makes the best quality images. So personally, I'm using Mid Journey with this. But as I say, you can use any artwork that you've generated or that you've drawn or that you have photographed yourself. You don't have to be bound to Mid Journey with this. But I'm going to use Mid Journey just because I think it's awesome and I love it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is create your own server. So let me just talk for a moment about servers. I personally, when I use mid journey, I just talk direct to the bot. So I go to direct messages and there's the bot there. And I just work directly with the bot that gets you away from all the newbie channels and you just send your messages to the bot and it talks back to you. Now I've seen some people say that you should use your own server because it keeps your images private. Unfortunately, that's not the case. No matter how you are communicating with mid journey, whether you're doing it privately through direct messages like I do, or whether you're doing it through a server, the images that are generated are still going to be publicly available on mid journeys gallery and searchable unless you buy stealth mode. So personally, I think if you're working commercially with mid journey and it's becoming a very key part of your business, then you should absolutely pay for the stealth mode. If you're just playing with it, I wouldn't worry too much. I mean, there is basically so much artwork out there that I think worrying about people stealing your images isn't really a big deal. And if you are that worried, if you're making enough money from your images that that's a big concern, then just buy stealth mode. But there really isn't any way to bypass it. Creating your own server doesn't bypass stealth mode. You still need stealth mode if you want to be truly, truly private. So with that said, let's go ahead and create our server. So the way you do that is you look for this little plus sign at the bottom and you're going to click that add a server. So we're going to say create my own. And then we're going to click for me and my friends. And here you can add a little picture if you really want to, to give it an icon and you can give it a server name. So we're just going to call this face test server boring name, but there we go. So here we are in our lonely server. It's just you in your server. What you can do, and actually, if you want to, if you have friends or family that you want to play with, 
using these tools, you can absolutely invite them to your server. There's no reason why you can't do that. I'm not because I'm just showing you guys and my only friends are robots. Speaking of which, we're going to invite two robots to our server. The first one we're going to invite is Midjourney. And the way you invite Midjourney to your server is you have to go find the Midjourney bot. Now, it should either be in your direct messages. There he is. See, he's hiding in the direct messages there. And I can just click here on his name. Or alternatively, if you're in all the newbie channels on Midjourney, you can go and find the Midjourney bot anywhere there. And so what you're looking for is the sailboat and the name Midjourney bot. So we're going to invite him nicely over to our server. I, I'm using him pronouns. I, I'm not really sure what Midjourney identifies as. I'm going to add to the server. So there we go. Add to the server. And I'm going to select the server that we just created, which is face test server. So I say continue. You can see what permissions he has. If you're not comfortable with all of those, you might want to change them. But I think you're going to need all of those. So I'm just going to say authorized. Yes, I am human. And now the mid journey bot should be on our face test server. So if you can't find your server, it should be here at the side. If you haven't set an image, it'll just have an initial like this. It says F FTS. Great. So yay, you made it mid journey bot. So mid journey bot is now part of our server. Hooray. Now we're also going to need to add the insight face swap tool. And this is the one that's going to do all the magic for us. So to do that, I have put a link underneath this video. So go click that link. So once you click the link, it says an external application wants to access your discord account. So you are going to select the server face test server and add that so it can send messages. Yeah, that's all fine. So we're going to add that again. I am human. Okay, great. So now we can go back to our server and you can see we've got mid journey bot and insight face swap. So we have friends. Yay. <laughs> I'm a little too excited about having robot friends, but now we can do all the fun things. So let's get an image generating with mid journey. So let's say I want to be, I don't know, I, I've done cyberpunk. I've done a cat girl. I'm going to be a, um, awesome let's say awesome lady detective film noir style bombshell yeah I, I i like that that's pretty cool so um let, let's send that to mid journey and <laughs> we'll get mid journey creating that image for us while that's happening i'm going to go to insight face swap and i'm going to type a command there oh there we go you can see my mid journey images are creating so I'm going to go to face swap and you can see here, here are the commands that it has. And really there's only a couple you need to worry about right now. We're going to do save ID. So I'm going to click save ID and it asks me to add in an image. So I'm going to just click that and I'm going to choose my picture there. So there's a picture of me from my last video. So that's good. Save ID and I've got to give it a name. Now you have to keep the name short. I think it has to be under eight characters. So I'm just going to call it calf one and we're going to save that now. Oh, look, there's our pictures here. So what I can do, I can actually just change these faces right away to be me. So you see what I've done there? I've set up ID name calf one. So I'm going to right click on this grid. I'm going to go to apps. And I'm going to click in swapper and hopefully what that's going to do is change this lady's face to my face crazy. And there's me. Look, check it out. In fact, I'm going to just upscale a couple of these so you can see a little bit better. But there we go. There's there's the original images there. So again, I'm just going to right click and go to apps and click in swapper. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one in swapper. And look, now I'm like a detective. How cool is that? And what is so amazing about this is that it's using AI to recreate my face. Like it's not collaging my face. You can see I have different expressions in these pictures, but yet they are me, which is really kind of mind blowing. 
So this is just a fantastic tool. You can use this for your author pictures on your books, for example. You can use this for headshots. Like you can do all kinds of crazy things with this. You can also use it for characters. So for example, let's say I want to create a character. So I'm going to use Mid Journey for this. So I'm going to say, imagine illustration from children's book. African-American boy, age 10, cute, smiling face. Okay, so this should hopefully generate a picture of a little boy for us who we could use as a character. Now, a lot of people are trying to make consistent characters for children's books, for picture books and so on. There are a lot of approaches to that. Mid Journey does not do it perfectly. It doesn't keep faces. But this tool is really, really good with faces. So you can combine this tool with some of the techniques for creating consistent characters. And some of those techniques include giving it very specific clothing styles. So you always have the same clothes in every picture. Other ways of doing it might be using character sheets. I've talked a little about that in my AI group. So do come and join us if you want to hear more about that. There's also various other ways of doing it using seeds, but this is a simple way of doing it. So, okay, we have some pictures coming through of a little boy now, and we can pick one we like. So I think I'm going to go with the first kid there. And if you're not happy with these, you can just re-roll and come up with more pictures. So great, we have this little boy here. He's got a great face. He'd be a really cute character in our book. So we're also going to create some images that we can put this kid's face into. So let's do something like this. We'll do an illustration from a children's book. Astronaut. Cute. Smiling and we'll see what this comes up with. We'll run that a couple of times and let's give it another situation too, like boy standing next to school bus. Now, really, if you're really trying to go for characters, you probably want to get a lot more descriptive with clothes. So you probably want to say like blue shirt, black hair, and try and get the character as close to the original character as you can. And that way, when you put the face on, it's going to look a lot more uh, transferable to different situations. But OK, here we go. So we're getting some pictures through now of astronaut kids. So to recap, we created this boy and we want to turn him into an astronaut. And also we want to put him in front of the school bus. So what I'm going to do is download this picture. I'm just going to put it on my desktop for now. And really you're probably going to want to upscale these pictures and i talk about upscaling in my last video as well that's just to get the quality right for printing especially if you're going to put these in a book so if you want to know more about upscaling your images to make sure that they're high enough resolution for your books do watch my last video about mid journey so once again we're going to run this command from insight face swap and it is save id so we're going to do save id and we're going to add his picture there. So I'm just going to drag and drop that on. And we're going to give him a name. So I don't know. Let's call him Steve. So again, the name needs to be short. I think it needs to be under eight characters. And it's going to be connected to that image. And what's great is that you can store multiple IDs, multiple faces in this tool. And then you can just go back and choose from any of those faces and switch them out. So here we go. We're going to do save id steve actually we don't need to switch id because it always uses the last one that you created so i can go to these kids now and i can right click and click at and then in swapper and hopefully it will go and add steve's face to those kids and i'm going to do the same thing with these school buses as well okay so i've run out of commands because i've been using this all day but there we go there is a picture right here of Steve so I will actually use that one now that would be the picture that I would use but you can see what it's done it's taken this image here and I, I like this one the best it can take this image and it has face swapped it for this picture here so it's taken our kid and it has put him 
into this picture here. So at the moment, you're limited to 50 commands a day. Oh no, and I have just run out. But that's fine, the commands roll over again at midnight, so we will be able to make more images then. But here you go, this is how you can do some simple face swapping to put your picture into any image that you can imagine. Have a good one, I hope you have a lot of fun with that guys, and I hope you come and join us in our new AI group. Before I go, I have just one more question, ma'am.